Okay, now we're going to check out the impulse responses of these plugins. And um, so for this, you probably want to turn your volume down at first, and then um, I will play some of these audio samples, and then you can turn your volume up to a comfortable level. I'm just going to go ahead and play here a single uptick, single sample uptick. There we go, and it shows up on the oscilloscope. I also have here a single cycle of 110 hertz, single cycle of 50 hertz, single cycle of 20 hertz. And all together, kind of looks like that. Now let's go run this through a couple of the plugins. Uh, for now, let's just look at the 20 hertz and the uptick. Okay. Let's take a look at the channel EQ. What does it do? Well, we've got our 20 hertz here, but then we've got a lot of post ringing. And that's pretty typical of EQs. Um, you hear that a lot. We start to get uh, a lot of boosts and cuts, and especially with tighter Q factors, um, you will start to hear a lot of post ringing. Um, let's jump over to the linear phase, see what it does. So what the linear phase is trying to do is um, keep the uh, phase of the uh, frequency um, intact, but it has to, because of the algorithms that um, I don't claim to know much or at all about, um, they introduce post, not only post ring here, although it's not as much, but a little bit of pre-ring as well. And um, that is something we'll talk more about. This then is the match EQ. And this is in the zero latency minimal phase mode. So it's actually pretty accurate. It's just got a little bit of post ring, but not that much. Let's flip it over to linear phase and see what we get. OK, so we've got a little bit of post and a little bit of pre as well. Here's our FabFilter Pro-Q linear phase with the low frequency definition that the match EQ does not have. Lots of pre and post. So at the expense of a lot of latency and the ability to have low frequency definition, there's a lot of pre and post ringing. OK, and then we have our Q-Clone. So for linear phase, although it's not completely linear phase in the low frequency range, uh, as we saw, we don't have any pre-ring, but we've got a little bit of post-ring, although it's not as much as, say, the channel. Now, let's go back and throw all of these frequencies in here. Let's take a look at each one again. Channel EQ. Linear phase. Match EQ in linear phase. Match EQ in zero latency minimal phase. The fab filter pro Q. and Q-Clone. OK, I'm going to try a slightly different arrangement of these samples here. I'm going to switch over to, we've got our um, positive uptick. We've got then right after that, the 110 hertz. And then after that, 50 hertz. And after that, 20 hertz. Let's go pump that through some things. Um, start with channel EQ. Linear phase. Match EQ. Linear phase. Match EQ. Zero latency minimal phase. Uh, 
test of the copy. And keep going. So what I notice is that of the various EQs, um, I would describe the channel EQ and the Q clone as being similar in, in the sense that they don't have any pre-ring, but they have some post-ring. Uh, the channel EQ has more than Q clone. Obviously, the linear phase and the fab filter pro Q linear phase, they, uh, this one is terrible, almost unusable. Um, this one here is um, slightly less, but the pre ring is just very annoying. And then, of course, the match EQ in linear phase, oops, a little bit of pre ring, and if we switch it over to the zero latency, I think it's actually the most accurate of all of them. Very well preserves the waveform with a little tiny bit of post ring here. So at the expense of a little bit higher latency and um, the fact that it doesn't have very good resolution down in that low frequency range, um, you you do have actually a pretty accurate response and it gives you you know the ability to match it gives you a lot of bands to work with um, so the q clone then has uh, the ability to match and it has obviously all the bands you need although uh, you give up a little bit of the tightness and the low frequency and a little bit of the linearity of the phase but at least you can have the definition magnitude-wise, which is important as well. So it's give and take. Now let's listen to some actual kick drum samples here. I've got one here. Channel EQ. In your face. Match EQ in minimal zero latency. And okay. And keep going. Switch over to a different one. Okay, now let's actually listen to a piece of recorded music that comes from the opening uh, drum and tom hit of uh, Yellow Jackets song that I've just looped here. And I'll roll through the EQs. So at the end of the day, I would say that definitely the match EQ to me sounded the best. It preserved the attack and the, also the tonal, um, the, the accuracy to the original. Um, the thing is, the, the Q clone is, is, for all of its advantages, uh, if you have to sacrifice that bit of, 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 of the accuracy of the tone. The tightness is there because there's no, there's no pre-ring, but the... Um, the tone is slightly sacrificed in the same way that the channel EQ, although not as pronounced, um, 
uh, but given all of the advantages that it has that are similar to the Match EQ, you got to decide.